In this video, we're going to take a brief introductory look at prospect theory. More specifically, we're going to focus in just on the utility function and how it differs from before. So what we can see here is a depiction of our subjective um, value function, our, our utility function, according to prospect theory, but we're going to make a few changes. So on the x-axis, we have our value. So this might correspond to um, an absolute amount of reward, such as uh, money. And we can see with the, the thick green line that we have this shape, which is perhaps similar to Bernoulli's idea. So we can see that the curve has the property of diminishing returns. When you have zero money, you have zero utility. As you get more money, your utility goes up. But as you get more and more, your your utility goes up, but by less and less. So we've had another video upon this shape of curve, looking specifically about this idea of diminishing marginal returns. One of the uh, differences compared to that video, though, is that we have this red line, which represents um, losses for negative amounts of money at the moment. Um, we can see that this has a similar type of shape. So we can see from the thin lines that if our subjective, um, if our utility function was like this and we gained a certain amount of things like um, one cookie, our subjective utility would increase by a certain amount. But again, according to the shape of this utility function, if we were to lose a cookie, we would basically, the, the magnitude of the loss would equal the magnitude of the gain. And so this doesn't work very well in terms of predicting loss aversion. So one of the first, the first things that um, happens with the utility function is to essentially magnify the losses. So now what we can see is that the subjective utility function here is now much steeper. And so if we consider a certain gain, that might give us a certain amount of utility, but an equivalent loss would actually now give us more negative utility. And so by changing our proposal about how value is related to utility in this way, making the curve steeper for losses, this goes a long way to account for um, loss aversion. There is one other major change, though, which um, exists in the prospect theory's utility function, which is now, rather than focusing upon the absolute amount of money that we may have, for example, now this curve can shift around according to a certain reference point. So, for example, um, this might represent someone's subjective value function who already has a, a higher amount of wealth than what we saw um, in the previous graph. And so this person's reference point would be at a higher amount. So you could think of it in terms of their bank account value could be a higher amount. So the key point here is that the utility function in prospect theory is defined relative to this reference point. Another way of saying that is rather than defining your utility relative to an absolute amount of money that you may have, the utility function in prospect theory is defined relative to the change in how much money you may have, for example. Now, let's just clarify that. So before, if utility is defined in absolute terms, an example of this would be, uh, my bank account has a certain amount of money in it and my happiness, my utility is directly based 
upon this number. So at the start of every month, um, my happiness would be very high. But then if I get down to zero, if I spend all my money by the end of the month, then I've done away with all that happiness. However, in prospect theory, your subjective value function is now relative. It's relative to the reference point that you happen to get, happen to be at. So now your happiness is based upon the change in your bank account. So now rather than having, you you may have lots of money in your bank account, but that according to um, this scheme doesn't dictate your utility. Instead, it's the the change in utility. So for example, if at the beginning of the month you get your wages, then you might experience um, a high amount of utility because um, your bank account has increased by quite a lot. But then through the month, what you might be doing is spending lots of small amounts of money. And according to this curve, because losses loom larger than gains, that would actually imply that if you were to spend all of your money by the end of the month, because each one of those uh, losses, each one of those expenditures is experienced as uh, more impactful than the gains, it might mean that, well, it would imply that you actually experience a net negative utility, even if you get paid and you spend all of your money at the end of the month, you um, you're, you kind of hover around zero. But uh, according to this scheme, it would imply that you would actually have um, ever decreasing utility. Now, these two changes that we've talked about, making the slope steeper for losses and now making the subjective utility um, relative to a reference point. So now you're talking about, um, are you gaining? Are you losing? These two changes explain both um, loss aversion and also framing effects. So you can think about different examples in life which might shift your uh, reference frame. So I have a video on the Asian disease problem and what we saw in that video was changing the the wording of things about saving lives versus the number of lives being lost automatically uh, what well, according to prospect theory would shift your reference frame to start thinking about things either in terms of gains or losses as opposed to the absolute outcome, the the number of people saved overall, for example. It also explains uh, why we might be risk averse for gains and why we might be risk seeking for losses, but that is not explained in this video.